Hi students, welcome to Bio 11, uh, week six. We're gonna be covering patterns of inheritance and human genetics. So just a quick note on our practical exam, it's gonna take place next week on October 16th. It's gonna take place on Blackboard. Uh, we'll have some short answer questions based on the information we've learned in our YouTube videos and the lab manual material for weeks one through six. Questions are gonna be in a short essay form. So you're gonna be given four questions and then we'll choose two questions um, to respond to with about six to eight sentences. I'll post the exam at 9 a.m. on October 16th, and you'll have until midnight that night, um, which basically is 12 a.m. October 17th, in order to complete the exam. Uh, it's not gonna take you all, all day, but you just have some flexibility uh, over when you can take the exam. <coughs> Excuse me. So, Today we're gonna to discuss basic genetics, which is largely focused on the work of this 19th century Austrian monk named Gregor Mendel. So Gregor kept a garden in his monastery and he was very interested in breeding pea plants. And through the um, breeding of his pea plants, he noticed that there was a specific phenomenon of trait inheritance um, in which the parents, uh, a yellow parent and a green wrinkly parent had many different combinations of offspring. So these traits uh, that he was studying are referred to as alleles, which are basically alternative forms of a gene. Um, so common examples of this are blood type, hair color, eye color, all of these are inherited traits. So Mendelian genetics, we refer to two alternative alleles as either a dominant allele or a recessive allele, meaning that the dominant form of the allele um, expresses, has dominant expression over the other allele. So if an individual possesses a dominant allele, that trait is gonna be present. A recessive allele is present in an individual that only possesses two recessive alleles. These combinations um, can be referred to as homozygous dominant, in which that individual has two dominant alleles, homozygous recessive, in which that individual has two recessive alleles, or heterozygous individual which possesses one dominant and one recessive allele. So this is also known as a genotype, um, basically just an individual's uh, genes. The phenotype is um, the word that we use to describe an individual's appearance, meaning the traits that they're outwardly showing or their gene expression. You can't necessarily tell uh, an individual's genotype just based on the phenotype because um, since the dominant allele suppresses expression of a recessive allele, both homozygous dominant individuals and heterozygous individuals will show that dominant phenotype. So in the example on the right, you see the purple allele is dominant over the white allele. So um, individuals that have two purple alleles and a purple allele and a white allele will both have purple color, whereas um, only the individual that has two white alleles will show a white color. So Punnett squares are a tool that can be used to explore all the different um, possible combinations in the offspring of two mated individuals. Uh, here is a basic square demonstrating Mendel's um, pea plant experiments where he mated a yellow individual with a green individual. And there's results in a 50-50 distribution or a one-to-one -one ratio of yellow offspring to green offspring. Um, individuals have two alleles for every trait because they have two chromosomes. So if you remember, um, we were discussing ploidy last week. So individuals are diploid when they have two um, copies of a gene, of a, of a chromosome, excuse me. So gametes, um, if you remember that during meiosis, we reduced that number to um, N so that the four daughter cells each have one chromosome each. Um, this basically uh, results in a distribution of these alleles into the gametes. So drawing a Punnett square allows us to separate each allele from a parent um, into a potential gamete that that individual can form. And we use that to trace the potential co uh, combinations that their offspring might have in the phenotypic ratio. So if you look at the yellow individual and the green individual, you can see that the yellow individual can produce um, a yellow gamete, or a green gamete, and the green individual can only produce uh, green gametes. So I've um, 
posted the links to two other YouTube videos which explain these different crosses um, with an example of guinea pigs and I think cats. Um, they're very cute, a little bit silly, but I think they'll really help you uh, explain how to do these crosses. So a monohybrid cross is a cross between two heterozygous individuals. So an individual that has uh, a homozygous, uh, excuse me, a dominant allele and a recessive allele. And this results in both dominant and recessive phenotypes among the offspring. And this only happens if the alleles of each parent segregate, meaning that they separate um, from each other during meiosis. So this leads us to the first law of inheritance, Mendel's first law of inheritance. This is called the law of segregation, in which each organism contains two alleles for each trait, and the alleles segregate during the formation of gametes. So each gamete, either the egg or the sperm, then contains only one allele for each trait, so that when fertilization occurs, the new organism has two alleles, again, for each trait, one from each parent. So you can also use a Punnett square to do two trait crosses. So this is a cross where you're tracking um, two traits, two pairs of alleles. <clears throat> uh, a dihybrid cross is a cross between two dihybrid individuals, meaning that they're heterozygous for, two, for the two traits that we're tracking. <clears throat> so the genotype would be big A, little a, big B, little b. This results in a phenotypic ratio, always, always results in a phenotypic ratio of 9 to 3 to 3 to 1, which represents the four possible phenotypes. So in this example where we have uh, these pea plants, we're tracking two different um, traits. We're tracking the color of the seed, and we're also tracking the shape of the seed. So if you look at these alleles, we have um, the yellow seed allele is depicted by a big Y. The green seed allele is depicted by a little y. The round shape allele is a big S, and the wrinkly shape is a little s. Um, so if we break these down um, and see how these, uh, these genes are inherited in the individuals, um, we'll see this 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio. So in an offspring of this cross, we can see that nine of these individuals are going to have round yellow seeds, three of them are going to have round green seeds, three of them are going to have yellow wrinkly seeds, and one, which is what we refer to as the um, double homozygous recessive individual, has green and wrinkly seeds. So this is only possible if the alleles of the parents segregated independently of one another when the gametes were formed, leading us to Mendel's second law of inheritance. So this is the law of independent assortment. And this law says that members of an allelic pair segregate or assort independently of members of another allelic pair, so that the color and the shape are separating independently of each other. We don't have a yellow seed um, linked or the, the gene for color is not linked on the same chromosome as the gene for shape, so they can separate um, however they want in meiosis. So this means that all possible combinations of alleles can occur in the gametes. So an easy um, trick to figure out the different gametes that can be produced by an individual, um, you use something called the FOIL method. So first, outer, inner, last. So if you imagine a cross for the genotype, um, a dihybrid cross in which the genotype has a big P, little p, and a big S, little s, you can take the first two alleles from each trait, the um, big P and big S. You take the outer two alleles from each trait, big P, little s, the inner two alleles from each trait, little p and big S, and the last two alleles from each trait, so little p and little s. Um, and this will give you each of the kinds of gametes. And you use these to fill in um, the column and the row headers for your Punnett square, and then you can basically combine each of the gametes from each parent to fill out that um, dihybrid Punnett square. So, how do we study genetics in the lab? Um, Drosophila, the common fruit fly, yes, the one that you know hovers around your banana in your fruit bowl, they're a common model organism for genetic studies. Um, I work with a microscopic worm called C. elegans, but flies are all right. So two traits that were used in the early studies using Drosophila as a genetic model uh, were long wings, 
because long wings are a, the long wing allele is dominant over the short wing allele and then the body color and a gray body uh, color is dominant over the ebony body and so um, researchers were able to cross flies basically engineer fly matings and follow these uh, traits in order to determine genetic um, principles so one of these genetic principles that fruit flies were very useful for, for was the discovery of X-linked traits. <clears throat> so like humans, um, in animals like fruit flies, chromosomes differ between the sexes. Um, so we have X and Y chromosomes. So all but one pair of the chromosomes in males and females are the same. These are known as the autosomes. And then we have the sex chromosomes, the pair that's different, the X and the Y for us. So some alleles that have nothing to do with sex determination are located on the X chromosome only. And one of these, uh, one of these genes in flies is eye color. So eye color in fruit flies is known as an X-linked allele. So um, the beauty of studying genetics in model organisms like fruit flies or in my worms is that the principles of genetic inheritance also hold true for humans because we are all... Um, we all arise from a common ancestor due to evolution. So we can use Punnett squares to determine inheritance patterns in humans. Um, so I have a little discussion board in which we discuss uh, seven commonly inherited traits, like a widow's peak, the length of our fingers, freckles. Um, so go onto the discussion board and fill out um, the survey, and then we can use that to track uh, the phenotypic ratio in our class um, in your lab manual. So with the discovery of um, genetic inheritance, we've also been able to discover um, the genetic basis for many disorders. Um, so neurofibromatosis, cystic fibrosis, Huntington disease, phenylketonuria, or PKU, and Tay-Sachs disease are all different um, genetic disorders. So neurofibromatosis is a dominantly inherited disorder. Cystic fibrosis is recessive. Hunting disease is dominant, uh, PKU is recessive, and Tay-Sachs is an autosomal recessive disorder. <clears throat> you will not need to know anything about these disorders. I just wanted you to be aware of some common um, examples of these disorders. So there are also X-linked disorders. Um, this is due to recessive genes for disorders that are carried on the X chromosomes. Um, and males are much more likely to have the disorder because they're only inheriting one copy of the X chromosome from their mother. X-linked recessive disorders in males are always inherited from the mother because, by definition, they're inheriting a Y chromosome from their father. So colorblindness is one of these disorders, um, and there's two possible X-linked alleles where there's a green sensitive cone or a red sensitive cone, and then another X-linked disorder is known as hemophilia. Um, this disorder affects a person's ability to form a clot. Um, these, these patients have uh, tremendous bleeding problems, internal bleeding, um, and it can actually be quite deadly. Uh, in some versions of the disease. So um, genes don't necessarily have just two alleles. A lot of genes can have multiple alleles um, or, you know, more than two possible alleles. One of these genes is the gene that determines blood type, ABO blood type. This gene has three alleles, IA, IB, and I. Um, and this is referring to the presence of antigen A or B on the outside of the red blood cell. So in uh, blood type A, only the antigen A is on the red blood cells. Um, in blood type B, they only have antigen B. In AB blood type, they have both antigens. And in O blood type, they have no antigens on the surface of their red blood cells. And then there's also the RH factor, and this is what determines the positive or negative of, for example, say the A positive. That's my blood type. All right, so... Um, because we've understood that there can be um, genetically inherited disorders, this has led to um, the field of genetic counseling, and this is where scientists can help parents understand uh, the inheritance patterns for genetic conditions that may run in their family. And these genetic counselors use something called a karyotype, which I alluded to in our last talk, which is a pattern of chromosomes derived from images taken during mitosis as the chromosomes pair up in the cell before division. Um, so one disorder that we can see on these karyotypes is known as trisomy. So this occurs when an individual um, inherits three chromosomes instead of two chromosomes, just because in meiosis, these chromosomes don't separate at the right time. So you can get one, uh, two pairs of chromosomes instead of just one. 
So trisomy 21 is the most well-known of the trisomies. This causes the uh, Down syndrome in individuals. Um, there are other trisomies, but the majority of trisomies that, uh, that happen in the other chromosomes are uh, fatal. Basically, the baby, um, the fetus does not develop and the pregnancy does not um, reach its completion. Uh, I believe trisomy 18 uh, can be survivable, but those individuals also have um, severe genetic, de uh, severe developmental defects. So, um, as we can see in the autosomes, there can also be sex chromosome anomalies resulting from uh, the, the chromosomes not separating correctly. So, Turner syndrome is XO, in which an individual possesses only an X chromosome. They don't inherit the second chromosome from the other parent. Some, uh, you can have poly X syndrome, which is where a person um, develops from an egg that has two chromosomes and is fertilized by an X carrying sperm. Klein fetal syndrome results in the genotype XXY. And then Jacob syndrome is XYY. And you can do a little exercise on your own to think about how a person with Jacob syndrome could inherit those, um, those chromosomes. Which parent would they get? the two Y's from. So pedigrees are another tool that um, can be used by genetic counselors. They're a sort of map that basically helps to trace inheritance of a genetic disorder within several generations of a family. Um, this pedigree that I'm showing you here is a copy of the pedigree of the descendants of Queen Victoria. So she was a famous carrier for the allele of hemophilia. And so she had many children and she intermarried these children with all the royal families of Europe and just because of the nature of aristocratic marriages in the 1800s, a lot of these families were already related to each other, um, either like close or distant cousins. And this led to a cluster of the disorder within the family. Um, and this led to actually uh, monumental historic um, events. Um, so one of the most famous descendants of this cluster is the Surevich Alexis, and he was the heir to the throne of Russia in the early 1900s. He was the son of Nicholas II, the last Tsar of Russia, and his wife Alexandra. And so he was born with hemophilia, and this sparked um, a crisis that eventually led to the fall of the Russian Empire and the Soviet Union, just because the line of succession was not secure, and they invited um, a mystic priest known as Rasputin into their family to try and help um, Alexis, and that just led to a political crisis that um, eventually led Nicholas II to lose his throne. Very interesting story if you want to look into it. Um, it's an interesting thing to read about in case genetics appeals to you, like it does to me. All right, so the experiments for today, I've posted some videos on monohybrid and dihybrid crosses to explain that process a little bit more. I also have a video on Mendel's um, pea plants. And then you can complete the phenotype discussion board uh, to complete the autosomal traits table in your lab manual. We'll be having the review sessions soon, so please um, come and visit me for those and ask any questions that you might have. Um, if you can't attend either of the sessions, please email me. We can set up our own appointment, or if you want to just send questions through email, you can do that too as well. All right, have a great weekend, and happy studying. Bye.